came here about 25 years ago to take the presidency of North Idaho College. And uh, like almost all people, fell in love with the beauty of this place. And uh, the neat thing I found out was that so many people have been from someplace else. So as a result, they were more open to me, to my family. And I found myself to be very comfortable here. My one daughter, my youngest daughter, moved out with me, she and her husband, and, and they had a baby at the time. And then later, my uh, son moved here, back from, uh, uh, he was down south. And then my other daughter moved up from Texas. So then I had all my family with me, and it was easy to stay in Coeur d'Alene. I stayed here for 12 years as president of the college, and then left, and uh, went to Montana for a while, and then came back. Oh, I said a minute ago that I think Coeur d'Alene is a place that captures you. It's a hard place to leave. I've known so many people who've come here as a, on a career track, and then they think, I don't want to leave here. I like the people. I love the place. And in some cases, it's tough on them from the point of view of career. But I... Um, I'm glad I've stayed. I, I'm retired and I've been retired for several years. Lost my wife about three years ago. Had to build a whole new life. And uh, actually I'm doing very well. I just got a new dog and I bought a new horse. And uh, I'm out there on a ranch with John Geeson sometimes riding my horse. And I feel, oh my God, it can't get any better than this. I didn't want to be a teacher uh, when I was in college. The only reason I became a teacher is because uh, my dad said, what are you going to do? And I said, I'm a liberal arts major, so that's not good enough. He said, you got to have a career. And by the time I finished school, I was married and had a baby. I took my first teaching job back in Iowa, and I remember going, I didn't really like student teaching. It was, at a, it was a very forced kind of a situation. But I remember the first time he came home after my first day on the job and I said, my God, Donna, you're actually paying me to do this. I loved it. I loved it from the minute I walked in the classroom. I, I knew it was a fit. And I taught for 11 years. Then somebody talked me into going back and getting a doctorate. But I stayed in education. I have always been proud of the fact that I was a teacher and an educator. A little disappointed at times that the money wasn't better and frustrated in terms of some of the things you have to go with. But, but everybody has to go through stuff like that. But for the most part, education has been very good to me. But most importantly, the thing that I like about it is that uh, if you're halfway decent at it, particularly in the classroom, it is a turn on because the students are coming at you and they're asking questions and most of the time they like you. And uh, I found that to be true through my whole career. I found that I had a chance to work with very gifted people, and for the most part, very good people. And there's nothing, nothing that's more fun than to be in a classroom or to be on a campus with a bunch of kids. As I said, I came in 87, and uh, I love NIC. It's one of the best rounded community colleges that I think I've ever been in. And the thing that impresses me the most about it is right in the center of the city. Most community colleges were built late or out at the edge of the town. They're never a part, an inherent part, of what goes on within the community. And I took that community college concept very seriously and believed that it should be the heart, the pulsing, pulsing heart of uh, what goes on. And I tried very hard to ensure that that happened particularly interested in, in the fact that the community uses the facility. And uh, I think I was part of the instrumental for having the Summer Theater come and be part of the college community. And I, I can't think of anything that I'm more proud of in terms of the merger of the community as well as the college. And you get the best of both. I've been here almost 25 years. I've seen tremendous changes in the city. If I were to look at this, if, going back to what the city looked like when I came and comparing to what it looks like now, uh, it's all for the better. It's all for the better. 
the changes that have been made in the parks, the changes that have been made in the building, the changes that have been made downtown, it all looks so much nicer. That's been a challenge, but I think it's, it's been a good challenge, and I think for the most part, uh, the people who were in leadership roles had a love for this area, and so they were willing to gamble and, and to take chances and make sure that uh, Coeur d'Alene realized its dream, its potential. I'm not sure that Coeur is going to grow a lot more. I think probably with industry leaving, and there's never been that much, that probably it's beginning to reach its point of maturity. The thing that I feel is going to be the big challenge is for people to continue to dream. Um, sometimes it's very easy to get set in your ways. and. Uh, I am concerned, quite honestly, about the political climate. I, I'm concerned that it's got to be this way or that way, and there's never an opportunity to come and say, hey, wait a minute, there's a better way out there if we can both get our heads together. And I, I'm hoping that the citizens will embrace change for the good things that it can come. I, uh, I want to preserve much of its, its wonderful history, but... Uh, I'm worried that, that sometimes that what seemed to be that continual enthusiasm that I felt when I came in the 80s sometimes is a bit tarnished right now. And people are so suspicious of others. And uh, I think they just need to see the bigger picture. The term civil discourse is a, is a term that I like very much. It's a concept I like very much. When I first started teaching, I taught civics, and so uh, I uh, tried to talk about the idea of government and the importance of government. Government's not bad, it's good. But in order for it to be good, people have to sit down and visit with each other about differing ideas and recognize that because I might differ from you, doesn't mean that uh, I'm necessarily a bad person or that I, I have evil thoughts, it's simply that I disagree. And it seems to me that's what this country was built on. If we go back and look at our history, it, it was always civil discourse. It was always people coming together and saying, ah, we got to go new directions, but not quite agreeing in terms of how, but always clinging to the idea that if we stay with this long enough, it will get figured out and it will get better. And I think for the most part, the history of our country has been that. I don't think the term is understood well anymore. Uh, debate is such like, I've got to win. No, not necessarily. Debate is something where you come and you have differences of opinion and you enjoy, you, you just enjoy the idea of sitting down and visiting and conversing about differences. I like where I am. Uh, and I'm so lucky that my children are close. And I hope Coeur d'Alene never loses its kind of uh, small town vitality. The mountains aren't going to change that much. The lake's getting prettier. So as I look at what's happening and I see the plans of some of our city funds, I think, oh, we are so lucky. We are so lucky to have people with some vision and are wanting to take, not making it bigger, simply making it better. And that's what I'd like to see for the continuation of Coeur d'Alene.